Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and you're most welcome to today's session. Thank you so much for taking off time to be with us as we are going to discuss uh, making your benefits count. We noticed uh, NSSF is paying benefits to its beneficiaries, its members, mid-term benefit, and uh, we decided to organize this session on investing in government securities so that we can be able to learn on how to make an income out of the benefits that we are getting from NSSF. So today, together with SBG Securities, NSSF has organized this event for our members so that we can be able to learn together again with Bank of Uganda trainers so that we can be able to learn on how we can make an income by investing in government securities. So today we shall be having in the house a moderator, Sadima Asha Nachiboneka Katamba, who is going to be in charge of the session. But uh, again, she will be able to introduce the panelists of the day. Please kindly share the link with your family members, friends, relatives, and anyone that you feel needs to get information on government securities as we start our discussion. So make it an interactive session. Please post your questions in the Q&A so that we are able to respond to what has been on your heart about government securities. Because a number of people are asking in our training sessions, how do they work? How can I invest? So today we are here to take you through how you can make it happen. Asha, I hand over to you. Please kindly take on the floor so that you, you can introduce our speakers of the day. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Jacqueline. Uh, good morning to all of our attendees this morning. Thank you for making time to learn and uh, we look forward to engaging with you and making this session worth your while. Uh, just to give us a bit of background about what we are going to discuss today, um, what we are going to talk about uh, this morning. Um, I think most of us will appreciate the fact that uh, over the past two years, given the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, several people's livelihoods were affected. And uh, one of the key things that uh, what we emphasized on or we learned from the pandemic was the fact that it is important to preserve our capital. It is important to um, put our money in several places because as one place is suffering, we are able to um, you know, make good with the other places that may not be largely affected by uh, the same, you know, by the same risks. And when it comes to the field of investments, uh, most of our audience will appreciate and understand that uh, Ugandans are largely entrepreneurial. So when you think about investments, you want to start a business, you want to do poultry farming, you want to go into real estate. Um, all that is good investment. What we want to talk about and what we want to encourage uh, our attendees and our members to uh, also have in mind is that there are other avenues of investment um, such that, that, may, that may not really require your active participation but are real still beneficial to you. So um, one needs to have investments both where they are actively involved and also the what we call passive investments where by, uh, you are able to earn something even when you're not actively working hard in it. So our discussion today will provide and equip you with information and knowledge that that will enable you invest in instruments that uh, that will enable you invest in instruments that work for you even when you are asleep okay so to discuss and unpack this topic today i have a very knowledgeable panel from the financial markets department at the bank of uganda and uh, i will introduce them before we get into the gist of why we are here today. So um, we have Rosalind Kohire. Uh, she is a right banking officer at Bank of Uganda. She's the lady seated right next to me here. Rosalind, you're most welcome. We call her Madame Teacher. So uh, please, uh, you know, uh, get ready to learn a lot from her. And then we also have Mr. Stephen Birunji. He is a market analyst uh, with the Financial Markets Department at Bank of Uganda. Stephen, you're most welcome. 
So thank you, um, Salma. Before we go any further, I request that we kindly first run the poll to get to understand the kind of people we are speaking to this morning. So please kindly put the poll up so that we understand the kind of audience we have today. So from the poll results today, we have no audience member that is below 20 years of age. 21% uh, of participants are between the age of 20 to 30, 31 to 40, we have 33%, 41 to 50, 33%, and then above 50, we have 12%. So we assume in the category of people maybe that qualify for midterm, uh, percentage is 33%, then the 12% of above 50. So gender participation, 54% uh, are male and 46% are female. But we also need to understand why why government security. So we also set out another poll. Please kindly also post a poll so that we get to understand if members have ever invested in government securities or what is limiting them from investing anyway in government securities. So I request that we also run those two polls before we get in the gesture of the discussion this morning. So we give it another one second, then we get the results and get to understand if we have any members in the audience that are actually doing uh, government securities as a way of investment. So 15% are saying yes, they have invested in government securities and 85% are saying no. So we have a big role to play on that, to let uh, the audience understand the need, if there is any need anyway, to invest in these government securities. And what is limiting people? Most people don't understand, 51%. I don't understand. Uh, we asked whether they have insufficient funds to invest, and 25% are saying, Yes, they feel they have insufficient funds to invest in these government securities. Then some people, 4%, uh, think government securities are for the rich. And then 13% the are saying, uh, we believe the returns on the investment are so low. So we need to also get to understand whether it's a fact or no. Yeah, so that's what we got in the poll questions. I hand over to the uh, panelists of the day to take us through whether it's a myth, whether we can actually invest in these government securities. Thank you so much. Uh, very telling results there. I think we are with the right group of people to help us uh, understand and also demystify any biases that we may have had about government securities. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, our, the objective of our discussion today is to equip you with information and knowledge that will enable you invest in your money in instruments that work for you even when you're asleep. I think that's very exciting. So um, to start us off, uh, Stephen and Roslyn, are going to take us through a brief presentation about government securities. So um, please open up your ears and uh, feel free to keep asking and engaging with us in your Q&A and your text box or your chat box. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you. Stephen, you're most welcome. Uh, thank you, Salma. Um, hello, everyone who has joined us on the webinar this morning. Um, the results from the poll are very interesting, so we're hoping uh, by the time we're done with the session, uh, the 51% who have not heard about the government securities, uh, that number sh uh, hopefully will have reduced uh, significantly. So uh, m myself and my colleague uh, will try to break down the uh, basics really of the government securities, um, you know, how to invest in them and, you know, and who can invest in them and what you earn and so on. So we will start off with a brief uh, PowerPoint presentation. It shouldn't take us long. Uh, we hope this session can be as interactive as possible, so we'll spend more time on the Q&A. Uh, but uh, 
uh, we'll start with a brief PowerPoint presentation. Okay, in the meantime, so people usually ask what, what are government securities. When you introduce uh, government securities uh, to people as an alternative, uh, an alternative investment avenue, uh, the next question most likely is going to be what are they? So um, government securities are basically uh, government debt uh, instruments. Uh, so basically, these are instruments that government uses to borrow. Uh, so government, governments uh, all over the world do borrow as well, uh, whether it's the United States, the UK, world over. And they borrow to uh, fund uh, daily uh, operations as well as uh, infrastructure projects. Um, so uh, when the budget is read, um, <coughs> part of it is financed by revenue collections. Uh, the other part is financed by uh, uh, borrowing. So it's not unique to Uganda. Uh, countries world over uh, fund their budgets uh, this way. So uh, government securities are instruments basically that the government uses to borrow. And we will look at uh, the different people who can uh, invest in them uh, in the subsequent slides. Um, so one of the roles of Bank of Uganda is to issue these government securities on behalf of the government. So we do raise um, um, this funding um, on behalf of government. Uh, so the instruments that we use um, are broken down into two. We have treasury bills. So treasury bills are basically instruments that have a maturity of one year and less. So currently we have uh, the, 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 the tenors that we have are three months, uh, six months, and one year. And then uh, we have treasury bonds. So treasury bonds are the longer uh, securities more than one year and uh, right now we have two years uh, three years five years ten years 15 years and uh, recent uh, recently a 20 year bond was introduced um, yep, next slide please Okay, so I already mentioned that um, <clears throat> as Bank of Uganda, we are the agent for government, so we do raise money on behalf of government. And uh, um, it's the investing public, basically, who lend uh, to government. And uh, my colleague will show us how uh, the, the modalities are, how the procedure is um, for someone who is looking to invest in this government situation. Basically, someone looking to lend uh, to government. So... Um, so governments do borrow, um, like we've seen from three months to the longest uh, period, which is 20 years, uh, with the guarantee that uh, they, they repay the amount you've invested initially. And with the, the payment for, for lending to government, you'll get um, uh, interest payment, as we will see, um, for, for your investment. Uh, next, please. Okay, I've already spoken to this slide, the different uh, maturities that are offered for government securities. Uh, we can look at the next slide, please. Okay, at this point, I'll hand it over to my colleague, uh, Roslyn, to um, uh, take us through the uh, modalities of uh, investing in the government securities. Thank you very much. Uh, I think what Stephen has talked about, I'm just going to be brief about it so that we can understand it properly. Uh, as we've been told, the government securities, they are there. Government is borrowing money from us, the public. And you need to know about the history is that it started way back in 1969. So you can see it has been there. But it's unfortunate that we have like 50% who haven't really known about it. Uh, we have what, when we talk about uh, the types of government securities, as he said, we have a short term. And when we talk of a short term, we call it treasury bills. The treasury bills are there every after 14 days, if you want to access them. Every 14 days, you access treasury bills. But we have uh, primary dealers in commercial banks. You have them 24-7. So you can access them through the primary dealer in 
which are commercial banks. And we have uh, primary, the, the, uh, there are seven primary dealers. Uh, namely, Barclays, Baroda, Stanbeck, Standard Chartered Bank, uh, Centenary, uh, B, eh? UBA, uh, Housing Finance, name it. And these are 91 days, which is uh, three months, 182 days, those are six months, 364 days, those are one year. So the treasury bills are short term in terms of three months, six months, and one year. As he has informed us earlier, we also have a treasury bond, which are longer. These are two years, three, five, 10, and 15 years. Then how do you, how do we access? How do we access? You either have to access these uh, government securities through a primary market auctions, which I've told you, uh, which is there every 14 days, or 28 days if it's a bond. That is once a month, and in, and in, in every fortnight we have a bill. And if not, we get it from our secondary market, as I had told you earlier. Then how do you operate? How do we start the investment? First of all, you must have an account in a commercial bank. It can be in a commercial bank, whether it's a secondary market or not. You open up an account, maybe you already have one for your business, for your salary, for your investments, whatever you have, whatever account you have, as long as it's in local currency, not a foreign account. You are going to approach your account you are approaching your bank and you tell them, I'm buying, I want to, re to open up a CSD account, which is a Central Securities Depository account. They give you a form, you fill it, and then you leave it with your bank. This form, you can also find it on Bank of Uganda website. You can pick it from uh, your commercial bank. You can even go to Bank of Uganda and you pick it whatever is easier for you. You fill it, then you give it your commercial bank, and you go. Within two days, less than two days, your account will be ready, and you start investing. So your bank is going to retain your, your form. When you are opening up an account, we, can, we have a form we call account opening form, and you must press your passport photo, and the account is free. You are not even charged one shilling. Then you move away. Within two days, you come and start operating your business. Then there is a form you have to fill, and you leave it with your commercial bank and go away. Business starts. Then how do you invest? When you are investing, I told you, you can either invest through a primary market, that those are auctions, when you are doing auctions at Bank of Uganda, but you must use your commercial bank. Then, <coughs> and again, you can invest through a secondary market. When you are investing, you must find out a calendar which is on the website. On the website, there is a calendar telling us uh, when we are buying what, at what time we are buying what. Having seen that calendar, you go to your commercial bank where we opened up a CSD account. You fill in a bid application form. The commercial bank will help you to do that. Then you just move out of your commercial bank, go your way. Your money will be invested and kept for the period you are interested in, either three months, one year, or six months, depending on an individual's interest, then you go. If you find that the commercial banks, the, the primary market we've already bought, that you can ask the commercial banks to buy for you, and that is a secondary market. Now, how to invest? When you are investing, 
we don't need only big people or rich people or people with big money, big chunk of money. Anyone can invest as low as 100,000 Uganda shillings up to 200 million. So first of all, when we're investing, you must invest in two categories. The first one is a competitor and the second one is a non-competitor. What do we mean? When we talk of competitive, we are looking at somebody who has above 200 million, you go into the group of competitive. Now, if you have 100,000 to 200 million, whether 1 million, 200,000, 500, one, two, 2 million, all those are under non-competitive. So you can buy as well. So what you, what it is, uh, uh, who can buy? Who are the customers? Our customers are very many. The commercial banks are also our customers. We have insurance companies. We have private companies, government agencies, pension funds. We have individuals who are 18 and above. But in, in, in case you have a child or you have a person who is below 18, but you feel you want to buy for that person, we, we can, you can buy as a trust account. You have a trust account, you buy. We even have foreigners who are buying. We have individuals, we have corporates, name it. You have a circle, we can be here and make a group of family. Whoever is, is able can buy. Now, what are the, some of the advantages? Before we go there, let's talk about the advantages, some of the advantages. These government securities, they have very, very good competitive rate, even though they attract a withholding tax of 20%. But if you are buying 10 years, 15 years or 20, anything above 10 and above, the withholding tax will be 10%. And this withholding tax is not on the whole money. It is on the interest that you are going to be paid. That's the very good thing of it. So there is no loss of money. You never, never lose your money. Whether you have put your money and you have gone away. So there is minimal credit risk. Your money is safe. It is ever there. But still, you must follow up your investments. You don't have, when it, it has matured at Bank of Uganda, we send it on your account. So if you don't follow it up to see what is happening to it, your money will be seated at your account doing nothing. So you are not making profit at all. You made the profit for the period you've asked for. Maybe it's one year, for example. After that, you, if you don't follow it, it remains on your account. So you better follow up your investment. In Uganda, most of us, uh, the saving culture is very minimal. So these government securities give us a chance of saving our little money. As we are saving it, it is being invested. So it is a saving and an investment mechanism. Our security can be used as a collateral for borrowing in any Bank of Uganda supervised institution. What do we mean? If you have bought your security, you want a loan, you can go to any institution. They give you a loan. You don't have to go and look for land titles look for people to come and sign for you. Just get a loan and walk out of the bank with your cash. Another benefit, these government securities are as good as cash. Let me assume I need, uh, I have like my 10 million on my account, I've invested, and I have foreign sick in the hospital, I need some 2 million to rescue me. What do I do? You, you go to the bank, you tell them, I have my 10 million, but I needed 2 million to help me. 
the bank will give you your two million and we leave the other eight million moving to maturity. So this is as good. You do it to your primary market. You don't do it anywhere else. You go to the primary market. But if you can understand with some other person who understands the investment, you can exchange. So these government securities are as good as cash. There are so many advantages we can talk about without ending, but it will all depend on an individual. Uh, before I go, <coughs> excuse me, before I go very far, may I give you an example of those people who have invested in these government securities and they have really benefited. One, once you have an account, a CSD account, every time you get something and there is an auction, you can buy. But you can also buy through a primary dealer, as we told you. I want to tell you a living example of one time we received six gentlemen. I'm sorry, I will use their example because we requested them and they allowed us to use their example. These were students from Makerere. I will not say their names. They came at our at Bank of Uganda those days. They filled in their form. They went away with 100,000 Uganda shillings. The next week, those days we would buy every week, they brought in another 10 million. With time, they finished their studies. They got employment. So they increased on the investment they were doing. So... I think before we went for COVID-19 holiday, the breakdown there, 2020, they came. Someone said, oh, may I have my statement? So we said, yes, we looked for the statement. When I looked at the statement, it had 600 million. They said, oh, this is good discipline. You have managed to keep your money up. The same said, yes, we did. But you know, we are six, one of us left us. And it is not only this money that we have. When we got employment, we increased on our investment. So we raised a lot of money and we bought land somewhere, a big chunk of land, which we have divided amongst five of us. And three of us have constructed buildings, uh, our houses, we are staying there. And we used this money, which we started with here. You can see that example. They started with 100,000. With the discipline, they kept investing, investing. Their investment increased. And at long last, they, at the end of it, they bought land. <laughs> they constructed building. They have married. Now, that is a very good example. I always admire them. And they still have investments of about 600 million. And by the time we talked, they, they had bought, uh, well, had a very big interest. Every six months, there was something going on in the account. Because for the treasury bond, when you buy a treasury bond, the interest you get, we pay it to you twice a year. Every six months, we give you half of your interest. Another six months, half of their interest. So I think uh, my colleague, you can talk about you add on uh, how this interest is earned. Mm. You, you can go back on the chat. Uh, thank you very much, Rosalind, for that um, uh, elaborate presentation. Uh, so um, I'll just supplement uh, a, a few. Uh, Rosalind talked about the primary market and the secondary market. So uh, the secondary market, like him, she mentioned, um, we have uh, what we call primary dealers. These are banks that were selected on a certain criteria by the Bank of Uganda. There are currently seven. So when we say primary market, when Bank of Uganda issues um, an invitation to tender, basically a statement in the media announcing uh, uh, an auction, uh, these seven banks are the ones that participate in that auction directly with Bank of Uganda. So we call that the primary market. 
but then so what do i do if i'm an individual and i want to buy uh, these securities and uh, i've not participated in the primary market <clears throat> so then we have what we call the secondary market uh, which is where uh, you can buy or sell uh, securities uh, it could be individuals uh, companies and all the other categories of uh, investors that we saw so that's one of the advantages of the government securities that she highlighted that you can uh, they are, they are, we call we call them liquid you can you don't have to if you've invested for five years you don't have to wait until the five years end if you have a financial need along the way and you need to uh, break that um, investment you approach your bank um, and then they will uh, it's fairly fast they will give you uh, your money uh, we will see the interest of course uh, if you're supposed to earn 10 million for the five years you will earn less because it's um, based on how long you have held the instrument but they are very liquid instruments. Whenever you need your money, you can uh, uh, liquidate them. Um, so that's the uh, to highlight the differences between the primary and the secondary markets. Uh, so if you could have the PowerPoint up on the screen, uh, we we'll look at um, what you can actually earn uh, based on the on the current uh, yields on, on the different uh, maturities that we we talked about. Maybe Stephen, um, on that last point uh, that you are you you spoke you spoke about, uh, how do I know what to buy? How do I know what is available for me to to buy as I am, I, as I, a participant of a, on the secondary market that you described? And also, uh, you spoke to they are liquid, which means one can access their money easily. Uh, the money that they had inve they have invested in it, they can access it easily. Uh, how long would I take, or would it take me to actually get that money back? Just for our audience to put it in perspective. Uh, thank you, Salim. I'll start with the last one. Uh, I think uh, Rosalind is more familiar, but uh, I think the following day, I think uh, you should be able to get you. If you approach your bank, she will uh, speak to that, but uh, it doesn't take long. The first step is to approach your bank and, exp uh, bank and express your interest to uh, liquidate your instrument. And then, yeah, uh, uh, Rosalind, please chip in. Uh, I think depending on which bank you are, uh, recently I accessed my money less than 30 minutes in the bank, yeah. in my commercial bank. So it doesn't take long. You go in the bank, maybe the longest an hour or less. But we should bear in mind that, uh, as Stephen said, you are going to be charged on the remaining days to mature. So you shouldn't put your money like now, next week we want your money back. So when you are putting in your money, make sure that this money is the money I may not need there and then. Because when they charge you, you feel, you feel bad. Eh? So if you are getting your, you are requesting for the two million as I gave and as an example, you are not going to take all the two million. They are going to remove some money less the, amount, the number of days remaining to mature. If they are 10 days, you are going to lose less. If they are 100 days, you are going to lose more. So when you put your money, make sure that you are either going to wait until it matures, but in the case you have uh, a challenge on the way, know that you can access your money at a loss. Uh, thank you, Rodlin, uh, for, for that. And we'll look at uh, the actual example. Uh, just to clarify that, so what you lose when you terminate before is the interest that you would have earned if you held uh, up to maturity. But the amount you invested, the principal is intact. It doesn't get touched. But uh, uh, please let's have uh, the, the, the PowerPoint back on. Uh, so we will now look at what you can actually earn uh, based on uh, the, 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 the yields. On, because the longer you lend, the more you'll be rewarded. So on the treasury bills, for instance, uh, on the one-year treasury bill, uh, your return, what you earn on that one, is less than, uh, for instance, someone who invests for 10 years. Because uh, the longer you invest, uh, the, the more you should be uh, rewarded for uh, holding your money for that long. Uh, so um, we've used an example of uh, investing in the five-year trillion bond and the ten-year trillion bond based on the latest uh, uh, yields. So yields basically is what you earn on every uh, 
tena that we've uh, already mentioned on the treasury bills, three, uh, 91 day, 182 day, and 364 days, and then on the treasury bonds which are longer dated up to 20 years. Um, sorry, I don't know if the PowerPoint is can be seen. It's, it's quite small. Those numbers are quite small. Uh, but so we've used two scenarios, and uh, like Rosalind mentioned, um, we have all sorts of investors from people who have, you know, the minimum amount you can invest is 100,000 Uganda shillings. Uh, and I also wanted to touch on that point as well between uh, competitive and non competitive. So, non competitive is someone who comes into the uh, into the auction with an amount between 100,000 Uganda shillings and 200 million. So, you're Guaranteed because it's an auction, you are guaranteed to succeed when you come in with an amount between 100,000 and 200 million. So, what it means for you to be non competitive is that you will take uh, the weighted average price for that auction. So, let's say if we're auctioning uh, a set of metals and uh, different prices come in, of course, for the person buying, they'll start with the lowest price, so 500 for say. Um, uh, it could be 10 tomatoes, 500 shillings, 1,000. So they'll buy different prices. So for the non-competitive participant, what you get is the average, basically, of those prices. So you're guaranteed to succeed, and you get the average price of the auction. Um, competitive, on the other hand, is for someone who comes into the auction, who invests 200 million and, and more, and there's no limit to how much you can invest. So, But for competitive, the minimum is 200 million, up to uh, however much you have. So there you'll have to, to, to come in with a price. Um, you can be guided by the bank, you know, your, your commercial bank, uh, because they, they, they keep track of um, uh, the, the trends in the market. So they can guide you on a realistic uh, price to come into the auction. So you come in with your price, uh, depending on where the price is, because government uh, wants to raise this money at the lowest cost uh, possible, like any other auction. So you start with the cheapest money, uh, the lowest price, uh, so th there will be an amount indicated for the auction. If it, if government wants to raise 200 million, they will keep uh, picking the cheapest money until they have filled the 200 million uh, up to the highest uh, price. So if your uh, price is too high, then you will not succeed. That's why you are referred to as a competitive participant in the auction. Uh, so uh, moving on to um, what you can actually earn. Um, We've used two examples. Um, someone who is investing to uh, 50 million. So we used the five year and uh, 10 year bond. Uh, so, like uh, uh, my colleague touched on a bit, uh, so government securities are just an alternative uh, investment. Uh, so, it's good to diversify. In other words, uh, it's not good to put all your eggs in one basket. So, someone can have uh, uh, a chicken business, they can have uh, rentals and then uh, government securities. Why it's important to diversify is that you reduce your risk. Uh, I'll use the example of uh, rentals, uh, which are the other popular uh, investment for, for many people. Um, the experience of COVID we've gone through, um, so I think it's common knowledge that uh, tenants have struggled um, uh, with rents. So um, if you had only invested in rentals, for instance, uh, you would struggle to get back your money. Um, so, on the other hand, government throughout the whole COVID uh, pandemic did not, whoever was holding an instrument got paid their interest at, at the right time. And I'll come to the periodic interest payments. Uh, uh, when we, so it's good to, to, to have diverse uh, investments, don't put all the eggs in one basket. Uh, the other point about government securities, because they have the backing of government, they are called risk-free. Uh, in other words, government does not default. Uh, uh, my colleague mentioned that we started issuing these uh, securities way back. And from that time, there has not been a, a default. So even when the government changes, this debt is inherited by the next government that comes in. So they are risk-free. You, you're guaranteed uh, you get your money because they are backed by the government. Um, about the periodic payments, um, so for the treasury bonds, for instance, you get paid uh, coupon payments. Uh, we can see it on the screen there, in the example, 50 million. So um, there's withholding tax. Um, so for 
the securities that um, 10 years and below, uh, it's 20 percent, and for securities longer, 10 years up to 20 years, it's 10 percent. So what we've tried to illustrate there is uh, the last column is what you earn after tax. And uh, you can see, so if I want to invest 50 million in the current five-year bond, um, you realize that what what you what will be deducted from your account when you uh, fill in that form with your bank is more by 7 million. So we, we term this uh, as a premium bond. And why it is so is that it's, it's very attractive. There's a lot of competition. So initially you pay slightly higher, uh, 57 million. But then uh, every six months you will get uh, an interest payment of, uh, sorry, I'm struggling to see those numbers, but uh, let, me, let me just. Um, I think maybe what we should do, because we are dealing with numbers and people want to really see and get a feel right. of what, um, what they would earn. Um, I'm going to request uh, Madame Rosalind to just go up there and you know, give us a, a physical example of how everything would roll out. Okay, that's all right. That, that will be clearer for, for our audience oh. and also for be their better appreciation. Okay, th no, those are better. I think we can use that example okay. instead of reworking. Okay, so... Yeah, sorry, it's gone off. Okay, I was uh, going to use a comparative uh, example of, uh, of uh, uh, rentals. Um, so I'll use an example of an, an area we, are, we all know, SETA. So if I got um, uh, my midterm access money, uh, or my NSF benefit, or any other investor really who is looking to invest in these government securities as an alternative to the other investment avenues. Uh, so... Uh, Let's use an example of SETA where, for instance, 50 by 100, uh, for illustration purposes, is 40 million. And you put up two units, uh, maybe totaling to 170 in total. So you put in 210 million. Um, now, let's assume the rent for each unit is around 400,000. Uh, so in a year, you'll get about, for both units, about 12.6 million. Uh, we mentioned that there's withholding tax on the interest you earn on the government securities. Uh, there is also rental income now on the rents, uh, which is 30% of the rent you collect in a year. So you see in a year, uh, 12.6 million, then you take off a rental income. Uh, that 210 million you've invested in those rentals, it will take you some time for you, first of all, to recover what you put in. Now, if you have a situation like what we went through, COVID, where people are struggling to pay rents, then you realize it's not a very good investment in the circumstances. On the other hand, if you put some in the government securities, let's use the same amount, 210 million, uh, you realize every six months you're getting a, a coupon payment. So in a year you get two coupon payments, uh, the, the PowerPoint will come up, but uh, on that, <coughs> on the 10 year, in a year you get about 7 million on that 210 million. And if you hold it up to maturity, up to 10 years, in addition to getting back your 210 million, the profit itself is 257 million. So you realize it's more than 100%. But of course, it's a longer period; it's 10 years. But I think uh, it's a it's a it's a shared view that for for rentals, you know, for you to break even, it can take up to 10 years. For land, if you invest in land and you want to resell to get a meaningful return, it takes on average about five years. So you can compare the two investments, and you see that the government securities. Uh, on top of being risk-free, the return is uh, higher. Um, yes, yeah, so I think we're struggling with the numbers. But that's that's a point I wanted to bring out um, uh, regarding uh, what you earn. The other benefits, I think my colleague had touched on them. So uh, risk-free, the governments don't default. The securities have the backing of government. Uh, it's a way to diversify. In other words, don't put all your investments in uh, one basket. It's good to have investments in uh, uh, different avenues. And the government securities are very liquid. Whenever you want your money, you can approach your bank and then you break that investment. And you'll get back your principal plus the interest that you'll have earned as at, point, at that point. Um, thank you. Yeah, so let Madame Roslyn just give us a, a better, I mean, a good example about what Stephen has been trying to explain. Um, 
by even writing a bit. Let's go into class. 101 principles. Actually, it, it may not be a better one, but it is our mang. I think it's better we, we, we see how it works. Uh, another, another example, Stephen, he did, you know, it, when you have rentals and uh, your tenants have left, definitely you have to put in more money. So there is a lot of, but this one, you invest, you sit back, and your money works for you. That's the beauty with government securities. So I wanted to talk, talk about how do we get this money? How do we invest? First of all, he told us that we have uh, two types, one competitive, Can we, see, can we see properly? So one, you can buy as a competitor, as we talked about. So you must be having above 200 million. Then there are those, we call them small investors, but they are not small. We have a non-competitor. We have non-competitor with 100,000 to 200 million. What happens? Every time we want to buy, I told you we have a, a, a calendar on the website. So you go to the calendar on the website, you find what we are buying and when are we buying. Assuming we want to buy treasury bills this week. When you check on the website, you find it there. You take your application to your commercial bank. You don't come to Bank of Uganda. Bank of Uganda, you come for information, finding out information and knowing uh, some other information about the investment. Now, this, when we advertise, this we put in the press. Information is in the press. It's on the website. Even commercial banks have this information. Or you come to Bank of Uganda, we give you the information. We have a window, window 14 in the banking hall, where people come. So the competitive, once they see that we have advertised, for example, we want back uh, maybe 210 billion or 185, uh, maybe it can, it can be anything, depending on what we are seeing out there. Now, the competitive are very important in the market, as we shall see, because they determine the price on the market. How do they do it? One. The competitive will come. For example, Jacqueline will come and say, uh, government is offering... Uh, let's say 210 billion. You say this week uh, we want 210 billion. We have advertised. So Jacqueline will come and say, My name is Jackie. Out of 210, I want 2 billion. Let me give you a little. And I want this rate. Bank of Uganda, if you are not putting this particular rate, please don't touch my money. So we take you. Another one will come. Uh, let me call him Obadia. Obadia, we also ask for maybe 210 million. And we also ask for the rate. So, Maybe let's say bank, let's say standard. It's maybe 60 billion. Maybe standard wants 60 billion. It takes 
Mind you, we told you what customers do we have? Commercial banks, individuals, corporates, circles, all those groups. So anyone is coming in. So we keep receiving these customers until our money is over. Maybe it gets over at Barbara. Barbara also has asked for two billion. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, when we receive all these customers, mind you came through the commercial bank. When we have received all these customers, we look at who of these customers is requesting for the lowest interest rate. Who is willing to lend the government this money at the lowest rate becomes our customer number one. I'll make, am I clear? So we start giving out money depending on who of these customers. So one, let's say Jackie wanted 10. Another one, 10.1. Blah, 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 maybe we reach at 12%. So when we reach at 12%, the 210 billion is over. We draw a line and then we call it a cutoff point. Our money got finished at 12%. So those who want 12.1, maybe 13%, our money got finished before we could reach them. So what do we say? We say these people are unsuccessful. You wanted a higher price, but our money got finished at 12%. Now, this cutoff point is the price that is going to everybody who has come in the market. Anyone who has come in the market, including Jacqueline who wanted 10%, is going to take at the, at the cutoff point. So, the price, the price we give you is not determined by Bank of Uganda. It's not determined by the government. It is determined by the market forces. I continue. Now, when you are paying, we told you when you are paying and it's a treasury bill, we pay at a discount. Our customers pay at a discount. You pay less interest. How? You are going to request for a face value this face value when you multiply it by the rate what you get is the cost and the cost is what you pay are we together now assuming uh, let me use simple examples and real examples assuming i want 100 million You come, you say, you want to have your face value at maturity to be 100 million. We shall tell you, fine. But you are going to pay us less interest that you have found there. And at this time, the interest were getting it at the cutoff point. Let me assume the cutoff point was 10%. So our rate is 10 so we are going to tell you pay us less 10%. What are you going to pay us? 90 million. Are we together? So you are going to pay 90 million, but you expect to get 100 million. So at the end of, of maturity, you are, expecting 100, you are expecting 100 million, yet you paid how much? 10%. You, 90 million. So your interest is actually 10 million in 100 million. But we have not removed with less. It should be less. A withholding tax, which is 20%, or 10% if it's above 10 million. That is a treasury bill. 
Now, for the treasury bond, we told you it is something, it, the futures are all the same. Except for rate, you can buy at par, you can buy at premium, you can buy at a discount. But also, this par or premium or a discount is also determined by those market forces. Because the competition is so high, somebody would say, ah, ah, I would rather get 101 million, but I go into treasury bonds. Are we together? So with a, with a treasury bill bond, I told you we have two years. We have two years, three, five, 10, 15, and 20. I send it. <laughs> and 20 years. But uh, when we tell you that you are earning so much, for example, let's assume uh, the coupon payment. The treasury, bills, the treasury bonds have coupon payment which the treasury bills don't have. Okay? We, I told you you can buy at a discount or you can buy at par. That means you are paying 100%. That is at par. Or you can buy at a premium. You are adding. Eh? And also that is determined by the market forces. Now, assuming we have bought the, 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 the system is the same. Futures are the same like a treasury bill. Now, we have an extra thing we call a coupon payment. Now, assuming our coupon payment for two years is like 10%. Let's assume it's 10%, which is determined by the market forces, by the way. Now, when you come in the first year, we expect to give you 10%, but we are not going to pay you this 10% at a go. We are going to see The first year, we are looking at your 10%. Every six months, we are giving you 5%. Another six months, we give you 5 At the end of the year, you've made 10%. Are we together? We go to another year. The second year, we do the same. We pay you 5 Another six months, 5 At the end of the year, you've made 10 So in two years, you've earned 20%. That is how it works. You've earned 20%, yet you've been paying you every six months half of the coupon. Am I clear here? But remember, it is less. 20% the interest on interest. But if it is 10 years and above, it is less 10%. So you can invest your money, you sit, your money keeps working for you. This interest, the withholding tax, sorry, the coupon we are paying you, it is up to the individual. Some individuals decide to keep their money. They keep reinvesting it. It comes, I'm not ready to use my money. Let me put it back. Another one says, ah, I want to use my money. Whenever it comes, I want to do something else. Another one would say, mm-mm. Me, I want to take half. So it is up to the individual to decide the way you want to use your money. So this is a very good investment where you invest and your money works for you. But first of all, you must start saving that money because you, have, you cannot invest something you've not saved. So after you have, for example, if you have gotten your... NSSF benefit, you can put it somewhere in a government security. It starts making money for you. You start earning. Either you eat it, you build it, you anything. That's Maybe, uh, Rosalind, uh, if I can just uh, get a real example there. Mm. Um, so if we're looking at uh, the NSSF benefit, uh, there's an example of someone who got their benefit and decided to put up a big house which unfortunately they did not complete because the money was not enough. So 
um, it may not be wise for you to put all your benefits say, in constructing a, a, a building at that age. On the contrary, if you had put the money in the government securities, you see the, the treasury bonds give every six months you have a payment. So the example we looked at, you have uh, seven million in a year, so that should keep you going. So liquidity is very important, um, you know, after retirement. You don't want to tie up all your money, even midterm access, by the way. You don't want to tie up all whatever you've got uh, in, in, in one investment. So the government securities offer an alternative investment that is very liquid, and then you'll get uh, periodic uh, investments. Uh, on the treasury bill example that uh, Rosalind has given, so the first value is the amount that the government will pay you. If you're using the one-year treasury bill example, after the one year, government will pay you a hundred million. That's what we call face value. But what's the amount that will that I will pay now for me to get interest that will take it to a hundred million? So that's the ninety million. Today, when I approach my bank and I say I want to invest in the one year treasury bill, they will debit my account with ninety million. So the ten million is the interest, is the return for me lending my money to government for one year. So that's the interest payment. Hope that clarifies uh, further. Um, thank you very much, uh, Rosalind and Stephen. I think because we do have quite a lot of questions that have come in, so I, I suggest that we deal with them at least for the next um, 30 to 40 minutes because it's quite a lot and uh, I would like for this discussion to um, you know, have a better impact, to have more impact on, to our audience. Um, Maybe Stephen, you could. I know you touched on this, but is there a special, um, is there a, a critical advantage uh, if I invest through that primary market, the auctions that you spoke to, compared to um, me going through the secondary market? Are there any benefits in that regard? Sorry, as an individual? Yes, as an individual. Okay, so Gerald is asking. Gerald yeah. Balit Twaula. Uh, thank you, Gerald, for your question. So the primary market that, like we clarified, is restricted to seven uh, commercial banks. We call them primary dealer banks. And those were selected on a certain criteria by the Bank of Uganda uh, based on how active they were in the market, etc. So the primary market, when we announced in the press, like uh, Rosalind mentioned, when you see the, the auction being advertised, we call it an invitation to tender. The participants that come into that auction are the seven banks, the, the primary dealers who then now uh, on sale in the secondary market. It's like if there's a, um, a primary market for, I'll use the example of tomatoes still, like we are only seven who can access from the farmers when they offer the tomatoes. So we go there, seven of us, we buy, but there will be so many people who are interested in the tomatoes. So if I go and then sell to other people, that is the secondary market uh, we're talking about. So for individuals, they do not, they no longer come into the primary auction. It is these seven banks that uh, uh, sell, on sell those securities to uh, whoever is interested to, to buy. And also for whoever is holding to sell. To, so it's the secondary market is for buying and selling. Uh, the point we talked about how the government securities are liquid. Uh, so it's that secondary market that you go to when you want to uh, uh, sell your investment. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Roslyn, um, I have several people asking, once I have invested my 100,000 in this treasury bill, can I make a top up if I get another 50,000 or 100,000? Can I keep adding? Definitely, you, whenever, uh, thank you for that question. Whenever you have invested your money, Anytime you have something, you keep investing. For example, we have people who have their goals. I want by December, I should buy this land. By December, I should have finished my house. By this, So you start your goal, maybe within five years, short term, long term. So you start investing, whatever you get. If I'm earning my salary every month, if I have my, my, my business every week, I want to keep putting this. Or every two weeks, because we are buying two weeks. So you are allowed to keep investing every time. Thank you. Okay, and um, Stephen, 
what uh, Samuel Omoko has a question here. Could you tell us uh, what the interest range looks like? Um, he's under the view, or he has a perception that interest rates can be very minimal, yet uh, there's a withholding tax. Could you help him clarify on that? Um, thank you, Simon. Um, so maybe start with is that the fact that the government securities are risk-free. Uh, so there's a link between risk and return. Um, the return is not really low, as we will go into, but I'll use the example of uh, money lending. The risk of losing your money there is very high, but you see some of the the exorbitant charges that are you know, being charged, 15-20% per month. But it's a, a factor of risk. Uh, government securities are risk-free, so, and, and if you get your NSSF benefit, the last thing you want to do is invest it in very risky, because uh, that's the last uh, f major flow you have, basically. So if, you, if, if they default, then uh, you, you might struggle. But the returns are not really low. Um, the example you put up there, the returns are really, really uh, competitive, even after taking off withholding tax. And we did use some comparative examples of uh, uh, the rentals. Uh, there are other alternative uh, investments, uh, chicken business and so on. But there's an element of risk. So for the chicken business, you know what could happen. You could lose all the chickens. For the rentals, we already mentioned that the experience from COVID, you know, uh, how household incomes were hit hard and you know people struggling with the rent. So there's also a, a risk of default there. So there's, there's that, there's that uh, element. But the returns are, are, are competitive. Um, we had the PowerPoint there and we were showing the current um, returns. On the 20-year bond, it's as high as 15% per, per annum. And uh, you see the, 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 the profit at the end of it there. Um, like on the 10-year bond, we've just used 210 million because I was using that to compare with the example of the rentals. But the profit at the end of 10 years, you see, is 257 million. So what you'll get at the end of 10 years is you'll have got coupon payments every six months, and then you'll get the 210 that you invested uh, in the first place. So these are really competitive returns. And maybe if I can just take it a step further, we do... Um, do analysis, we look at what the other countries are, are paying, because every country, like we said, issues debt, and you see where they're paying. And in the region, uh, our returns are, are, are really high, and that's why we've seen, so when we talked about who can invest in the government securities, one of the categories was the offshores. So they are, they are fund managers and people who manage funds, and they're always looking out for which country has the highest return? And we've seen very strong growth in what they hold here over the last uh, two years, which is an indication that um, our um, yields are very strong. But there are also other considerations. Uh, so what you earn may be eroded by inflation. So one of the things uh, we are credited with is uh, maintaining uh, inflation uh, relatively stable. Um, the medium-term target is 5% inflation, and um, so we are not very far from that one. So compared to other countries, we've seen, uh, uh, for instance, Ghana, where inflation is very high. You may earn this money, but then the purchasing power is low. So the, the actual return you know, the, is, not, is not that high. Then there's also um, a factor of the exchange rate, at least for the offshores. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a consideration for them. The Uganda shilling rate is very uh, fairly stable. Because if it depreciates, then it will erode their return. So that's another consideration. Uh, in other words, um, when you compare around the region, uh, the yields are now on the government securities for Uganda are relatively competitive. Thank you. And um, Stephen, I'll still stay with you. A uh, lot of people are asking, you're talking about, um, you know, the rate on a 20-year bond. Is there a place that uh, they can find this information to keep track uh, of where those interest rates oh, are? Oh, ab absolutely. I should have mentioned that. So on the Bank of Uganda website, um, we do provide, uh, maybe Salim, um, Jacqueline will provide those details. We do publish uh, a yield curve, uh, which is basically the guide of where the yields are at the moment. 
So that can uh, guide your decision when you're looking to invest. Uh, because like we saw yields keep moving and they're influenced by different factors. Uh, it could be, a, like she mentioned, a factor of demand and supply. If there's so many people interested in the auction, then we tend to take, government will get the money at a relatively lower rate. But on the Bank of Uganda website, we do publish the yield curve, which shows uh, how much is being paid from the three-month treasury bill to the longest tenor, which is a 20-year bond. So that acts as a, a, a guiding uh, for, for, for those looking to invest in the securities. And we have uh, we have we have um, historical um, information there, including for all the auctions that we've, we've had. Uh, so we'll provide the, the details of how to navigate to that site. Okay, thank you very much, Stephen. Um, Rosalind, this is going to come to you. Uh, there's someone who has a very interesting question here. Uh, Lydia is asking, what will happen if the investor dies before maturity? Can the next of kin access this money? What is that process? What does that process look like in brief? Thank you very much. Thank you, Lydia. It's a wonderful question. Uh, in the event that someone has gone, which is normal, we keep your investment. We wait for powers of administration to direct us where your money should be. So you can never lose your money, Lydia. I think I've answered. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there's plenty of questions. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll still stay with you, Rosalind. What happens in case uh, the primary dealer have selected clauses? The primary dealers, you mentioned they are commercial banks. So what happens in, in case the primary dealer that I have selected as an individual closes business? What would happen to their investments? Exactly. You know, uh, you use the primary dealer and your money is passing through a primary dealer. Your money is not going to stay on the primary. It is coming to Bank of Uganda. So don't get worried. Your money will be Bank of Uganda in, Bank, in Bank of Uganda. And when it matures, it goes, it goes back. In any case, Bank of Uganda is supervising these commercial banks. No customer should lose money at all. When we, the bank is closed, definitely our customers, they are our customers. We take care of them. So you shouldn't worry about that. Okay. Uh, maybe an addition to that. Mm. So, like Rosalind has mentioned, um, much as we've gone through um, your commercial bank, uh, these securities eventually are held into what we call a central securities depository system, which is at the Bank of Uganda. So we're able to see even when clients, uh, customers request for their statement, it's that system where the statement is generated, and they're able to see what they hold. So everything is uh, uh, is, is centralized at the central bank. And uh, for clarity, Stephen, on that point, I, uh, how do I access that uh, CSD account? Am I able to maybe use my phone and just keep track of what, where, wh how my investment is going? Is that how it works? Um, Rosalind, you want to take that? Uh, you can, uh, first of all, after you have purchased your treasury bill, as Stephen said, money comes to Bank of Uganda. Now, you can come for your statement or you get it from your commercial bank. And uh, we said when you need the money? Uh, no, it was really about tracking. Yeah, uh, tracking. Yes. Yeah, some when is my next coupon payment? Exactly. Yes. When you buy, you must come and take your statement. We have customers who are purchasing every time. We have treasury bill, we have treasury bond, they are coming in every time. So after you have purchased, we do a settlement on a Thursday, on a Friday you come to Bank of Uganda, we can give you your statement. You can go to your commercial bank, you get your statement. So you follow it up. Mm -hmm. Maybe I came to a commercial bank and I was late uh, to invest in government securities. They have not, but in your heart you know you have done it. And when you come, you find your money still on your account. What do you do? Ask for the statement. Okay. And request your commercial bank, please help me invest my money the other time you didn't. 
So every time, that's why we are telling you keep track of your investments. Go to the commercial bank, find out, come to Bank of Uganda, get your statement, or your, your, your commercial bank, they give it to you. Okay. Um, thank you for that, Roslyn. Um, Williams is asking, I'll stay with you, Roslyn. Can I just walk into Bank of Uganda and open up an SCD account? Oh, thank you, William. No, you can't, William. You must have an account in a commercial bank. First of all, you know, these commercial banks know you. They know who you are. So you are coming to us through the commercial bank. So you can never come to, come to Bank of Uganda to invest directly, but you must pass through a commercial bank having opened up a CSD account. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Roslyn. Stephen, William Worodria has another interesting one here. How do treasury bills interest rates fare against inflation? Okay, that's an interesting one, uh, William. Um, so I did mention that inflation was a factor uh, in terms of what you earn. So um, for individuals, you may not be that sophisticated to take into consideration inflation and so on. So you may need advice uh, and, and uh, I should have mentioned that there are other people who can invest on your behalf. So we have a uh, unit trust, basically uh, people who collect funds from individuals and so on and invest on their behalf. So mm -hmm. they are fairly more sophisticated. They have fund managers who will track, you know, different things and know the right time when to invest and divest and so on. But inflation is key because it will, like I said, it will, the, the actual return you get you may think you're earning 15% uh, when inflation is eroding uh, the purchasing power. So whatever interest you earn, eventually you will go out there and buy things. So if the prices are so high, so basically the purchasing power of what you've earned is, is low. So um, if inflation is high, so if I'm coming into the auction, I'll say, well, when I get this money back, it may not be worth so much. So I require a higher return to compensate uh, for what inflation is eating away. So that's another key. Um, inflation here is relatively low, so it's a, an attractive uh, investment destination, especially for the offshores. But now for uh, even Ugandans, now you know that uh, the government securities uh, give a, a very competitive return. Thank you. Um, thank you, Stephen. And maybe for uh, the benefit of our audience, I'll just emphasize to them that there are direct ways uh, where you can invest in government securities. Um, which is the process that uh, the panel has been uh, emphasizing on. So you have to walk into a commercial bank or you already have a bank account with a commercial bank and you go through them to directly invest in government securities. But there's also an indirect way um, through which you can invest in these instruments. Um, he spoke about Unitrust, which pull different funds together and go to the market, work with professionals. Um, so one of the reasons why we exist as SPG Securities Uganda is to help you, one, guide that investment, um, your investment process, your investment decision, uh, especially if you want returns that will ensure that you're beating inflation. We are professionals, so we ensure that you are allocating and uh, we ease that process that uh, was described by helping you and guiding you on your investment journey. I will carry on with um, with the questions that we we have. Uh, Madam Roslyn, Innocent wants to know, can they invest two million shillings at, for five years at once? You mentioned the minimum is, uh, I think, 100,000? Yes, yes, Innocent. Uh, we told you you can invest even if you have 100,000 Uganda shillings. So if you have two, two million, it's good to go. You can start there and then, anytime. And between the way, before it has matured with, for the five years, you get something else. As long as it can make 100,000, 200, 300, in, in, in multiples of 100,000, you can always keep buying, adding on your investment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Stephen, I'm going to pose this to you. Uh, a lot of people have been expressing concern about uh, when they buy their bonds at a premium. 
are you able to help me break down what that means and uh, what that implies? Uh, thank you, Salma. Um, I think I did touch on it a bit. So what it means for a bond to be at a premium is uh, like where we started from. Um, the price is determined by demand and supply. So if uh, so many people are interested in uh, the bond, uh, then the price, uh, like um, Rosalind, uh, Rosalind illustrated. So the price is determined by the different bids that come in. And um, so if there's so much interest and it, it's competitive, so the price is going to be high. So what it means for the bond to be at a premium, if I'm going to invest 10 million, and the bond is at a premium. It means that it initially, to, to, to like anything that's that's priced, really, you have to pay higher for it. So if I'm going to get that bond, I might have to pay 12 million. So uh, you realize initially you paid 2 million more, but then the coupon payments you get, um, after a few uh, installments, you'll have recovered your 2 million, and then now you start making uh, profits. So, but as we saw in the example, at the end of the whole period, overall you'd have made the profit. But it's the point of entry that the price is slightly higher because the demand is so high. So that's what makes it a premium bond. Thank you. Uh, just for clarity, I do not lose money. No, you do not lose money. So 10 million is intact. It's just the interest now. But that interest, so the 2 million you paid initially, will be covered by the interest and then you start to make uh, a profit as, as the interest accrues. So you don't lose uh, money. In the end, you'll make a profit. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Madam Roslyn, Mulinda Yahaya is asking, can an investment club invest in government securities and what uh, what is required to do so? Oh, thank you, Linda. An investment club is a it's also a group of people once you've made your club you can invest but at least you must choose representatives you must have your account in a commercial bank then uh, choose representatives because if it is more than a group if it's a group that is more than two people or one per person that means you need representatives to represent you maybe two or three so they can open up on an account and then they are ready to buy mm. um thank you for that so i'll stay with you because audrey has a question relating to what you had already spoken about mm. uh the money that they keep adding you remember how you mentioned that uh if i uh, if i have invested my hundred thousand shillings and uh, I get another 100,000 shillings, I can still add that money. So Audrey wants to uh, understand this money that they keep adding, does it start on its own, say to, um, the two-year journey, or does it boost the initial investment that they had the other time wow. at the start? Hey, yeah. Audrey, thank you very much. That's a wonderful question. Uh, when we invest your money, for example, I start investment today, I put in my two million, uh, two weeks down the road, I get 100,000, I put. It is going to mature differently. Whenever you put your money, it is going to mature differently, but it is adding up on your account. So when you come to get your statement, it will have a total of how much you've invested, when it's maturing, when you invested it, when the interest you earned, Fine, like that's how it works. So it doesn't mature at the same time, but it is it makes a total. Okay. Um Stephen, David Chitio is inquiring, is there a best option to consider when buying government securities? Whether is it at par, premium, or discount? Is there anything that's better, much better? Um, well, uh, thanks, David, for the question. So um, it depends at the point you want to invest um, and how much money you have. So for a discount, you'd basically um, you'd pay if, if you're looking to lend government at maturity, say, uh, 10 million, you'd, you'd upfront your bank will debit you, say, 8 million. So if you have less money, then you can invest for a premium. 
where the demand is uh, high, you'll have to part initially with a slightly higher cost. So it depends on how much money uh, you have to invest. And for pies, you know, if you're going to get uh, 10 million at the end of it, so you're going to put in uh, 10 million. So the timing of uh, investment really is it's partly due to individual circumstances in terms of, uh, you know, the, your cash flows. Um, but also it's a, uh, when you get in, it's a fact of uh, the uh, market conditions at the moment. Uh, so in the current environment, and uh, we've seen for uh, at least for some time, most of the trade bonds are at a premium. In other words, the demand is so high, so initially you part with a slightly higher cost. But as we saw, as you start to accrue the interest, um, by the end of it all, you, you make a profit. Uh, I hope that answers. Okay, um, thank you, Stephen. I'm still going to stay with you. Does the CSD account hold both the treasury bills and the treasury bonds? Uh, uh, Martin is asking. Uh, that's right, Martin. So all these government securities we've talked about, there's one central system at the Bank of Uganda where they're all held. Uh, so all the trade bills and trade bonds are held in that uh, uh, central securities uh, depository system. Okay, um, thank you for that. Uh, Madam Roslyn, I think you mentioned one of the benefits of investing uh, in government securities is that they can be used as collateral for a loan. Uh, Martha Atieno is asking, how much would you have to save for security in order for one to qualify for a loan? Uh, thank you, Martha. Different commercial banks have different g guidelines. So you can talk to your commercial bank and see, but I believe any amount of money you can qualify for a loan as long as your money is there. Let's say Martha has uh, 50 million and is in need of 20 million. You are going to get your 20 million and you leave your 50 to move. So it's a matter of negotiating with your commercial bank. Uh, maybe if I can add to that uh, what Martha has asked. Um, it goes back to what we are talking about, uh, about the fact that the government securities are, are liquid. In other words, whenever you want to sell, in the secondary market, you can go out there and sell. So it's not just individuals. It's even the bank that's giving you the loan uh, that's taking on the securities as collateral. So the fact that they are liquid, the bank knows if um, your securities are worth 50 million, uh, different banks will have different guidelines, but you're probably going to get very close to that amount. Because they know that if you default, then that security can be sold uh, fairly quickly in the in the market. Because the the market for the government securities is uh, very liquid. Thank you very much, uh, Rosalind and Stephen. Uh, I see some questions that I have the capability of responding to. So, uh, just to give my panelists a bit of a breather to take some Enzori mineral water, uh, they uh, I will deal with. Uh, uh, Dashan Joshi's question, whom should we connect with in case of more questions? Dashan, I have uh, put uh, our contacts for SBG Securities in the chat. Uh, you can contact us on uh, the phone number is 0312 or you can send us an email um, on sbgtrading at stanbic.com. Uh, we are also, or our physical offices are on fourth floor at Crested Towers. So uh, you can reach out to us and uh, we will be able to deal with all your questions. Kisarin um, wants to know what unit trusts are. And um, in brief, unit trusts pool funds together. So uh, in case, um, Reen, you have your 100,000 and uh, Dashan has 100,000, Salima has 100,000, Unit trust providers, uh, SPG like SPG Securities, will pull that 100,000 or all that money together and we will uh, go to the market as one. Um, hence, um, as one taking all that money along, um, we uh, you know, as um, as the entire bulk of that money taking it to the various investments. So, I mentioned that that's an indirect way. Uh, through which you can invest in government securities because uh, essentially these unit trusts, some of the products or some of the assets that they invest in are uh, government securities. So it is an opportunity, especially um, uh, for 
for people who want to diversify their portfolios or their investment streams, it is an opportunity that they can take up. And uh, we are able to break that down further for you at SBG Securities. Um, my panelists, I'm back to you. Uh, there was a question here. Um, Stephen, Samuel Senfuka is asking, why is the withholding tax on treasury bills and bonds different? Why isn't it one uniform um, withholding tax between treasury bills and bonds? Uh, thank you, Samuel, for, for that question. So uh, you're right. So the withholding tax on... Uh, uh, the government securities, that's for the T-bills, three months, all the way up to um, uh, maturities of 10 years is uh, 20%. While on the longer dated uh, uh, tenors, that's up to 20 years, it's uh, 10%. Um, so I, I attempt to answer why, but uh, the longer the period is, you know, you need some incentive for you to lock up your money for that long. So for someone who is going to commit uh, money to lend to government for 20 years, they, they, want, they will need some extra incentive. So the rate is lower there uh, to encourage uh, more participants to, 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 to invest in that space. Uh, in a nutshell, that, that's the reason I would give. But uh, I would compare it, so it's, it's, it's very similar in the other countries as well. The short uh, security is, uh, uh, the withholding tax is slightly higher. Uh, some of the countries, for instance, Kenya, that have uh, a longer security um, for the infrastructure bond, there's no withholding tax there. So just provide an incentive for, for investors to uh, invest in that longer uh, space. Thank you. Madam Roslyn, Jen Nachimo is asking, will it be the commercial bank to alert the individual that the investment is above 200 million? and that the, that the individual qualifies to be in that competitive space that you spoke about, or is it upon the individual to know these things so that, um, so that they know what rate, do they have to ask for the rate um, as per the regulation or the rules for um, competitive bidding? Yes. Uh, thank you, Natipuri. Uh, Buying these government securities, we told you, can either buy as a competitor or a non-competitor. So if you have 100,000 to 200 million, just approach your commercial bank. You don't have to hustle with anything. Your money would be invested automatically, and the rate, the interest rate, will be determined by the market forces. Now, you want to buy above 200 million, meaning you are competing, then you approach your commercial bank, they will assist you in investing. But first of all, we want to give you knowledge because knowledge is power. If you know what you want, you can even go to the market, to the commercial bank and ask them, I wanted to put my money, but I, me, I don't want this 10%. I want 12%. Maybe I can look for something else better than the investing in government securities, which can give you. So we are giving information to equip you so that you look for better investments. Yeah, Much as these government securities are free and nice, it is up to the customer. They are very safe. Hmm? You are going to relax, your money will be there. But you are, it's up to you to decide. But once you decide to go in, Nothing will lose. So the commercial bank can help you determine, but also you go to the website, find the information, see how the market is moving, see whether you can go with that price that is at the market that time, or you are not able to, uh, to go to it. So either you determine for yourself, you tell the commercial bank what you want, or you ask the commercial bank to assist you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Madam Rosalind, I'm going to remain with you uh, to answer this question. Godwin Muhwezi is asking, can I reinvest the interest to earn more interest? And if I want to reinvest, do I have to buy in the primary market or over the secondary market? And is it automatically topped up on my other investment so that I can earn more? 
Thank you, Muhwezi. When you are investing your securities, as we said, the time you come in, the price you find there, it is the price you are going with. And it is not going to change until it has matured. So when you are buying, you can always buy every time you go to the market and you find a security buy. But it, is, has, its, it has its price. Every time you come, there is a different price, depending on how the market is reacting. So you cannot, uh, you add it on, it's maturing a different time, and it has a different price. So prices are always different, but at the end of the day, they add up. Let's say I've been investing 10 million, 10 million, and the total I have now 500 million. Okay? It is there 500, but invested at different times, and actually it even helps you. If you want to withdraw one, you withdraw the one that is closest to maturity so that you don't lose a lot of money. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rosalind. Stephen, uh, Carolyn is asking, Carolyn Papok, are the interest payments made every June and December, or is it the sixth month from the month of first investment? I think she's talking about the coupon payments. That's right, yeah. Thanks, Carolyn. So the coupon payments, uh, much as we say, semi-annual. So it's from the point, like you've already said towards the end, from the point you invest, so every six months from the point you've invested, not necessarily January to June and then December. So if I come in today, 31st March uh, 2022, the first coupon payment is going to be uh, September, so up to six months. Okay, um, thank you for that. Um, Madam Roslyn, you, in your explanation of how the auction works, um, at higher RST is asking, so the client or the investor in this case has the capacity to negotiate interest? Is that how this, uh, the auctions work? Uh, actually, I don't know whether I should call it negotiate, <laughs> but you have a right to say, I'm putting my money for this period, and I want this interest rate. I, I, I let me use the crude word. I would, I think you are dictating. If you are not putting this interest rate, don't ta take my money. So there are other people also who would come in and they ask for that price. So Bank of Uganda is going to look for the customer who is requesting for the lowest interest rate to become their first customer, number one until the money that is already offered is over. So it is up to you to dictate, no, 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 don't touch my money. I have better better issues. If you're not putting my 12%, whatever. Hmm. Yeah, maybe if I could just add to that one. So um, it's an auction. So you come in with different bids. It's like if you're bidding on an item, all of us here can put in a bid. We don't know what the other person has put in. But uh, from where we stand, we try to raise money for government at the lowest cost possible. So we'll take from the cheapest and so on until you fill the money like we illustrated. So you're not really dictating. You come in with your bid uh, based on what has informed your pricing. And then depending on who everyone else is pricing, either you succeed or not. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Roslyn, do Joyce Namlondo is asking, does she have to always ask for the statement or is there a schedule for sharing the, their CDS statements? Uh, your statement, you can always access it through your commercial bank. So you must come and ask for your statement, then we give it to you. And we must confirm you are the real owner. Yeah, that statement. So we don't just give you; we give you on request. And um, maybe Stephen, I'm going to put this to you because I see a lot of people asking whether Bank of Uganda is being more intentional in a, about putting this information out there, since uh, a lot more people don't understand or have the appreciation of these investments, yet more people can benefit. So maybe you could highlight what is Bank of Uganda doing in that regard. Yeah, thank you, Selma. So this particular one is uh, an initiative by NSF, uh, it's their financial literacy initiative. But at the Bank of Uganda as well, we have a financial literacy program. Um, 
before COVID, we would do countrywide sensitizations, you know, uh, different districts, but uh, COVID sort of interrupted that. That should resume uh, soon. So we do uh, have a financial literacy sensitization program of our own, uh, similar to what's happening here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I see Joseph, Mary, a lot of people are asking, <laughs> why doesn't NSSF invest on their behalf? And uh, uh, still from uh, a point of knowledge, I know NSSF does invest uh, some of the monies that our members are saving with it in government securities. Uh, you can always refer to um, their, the annual members, um, the annual reports on, uh, available on the NSSF website. You will note that uh, they do have an allocation to government securities. So I am right to say that NSSF is already investing uh, on your behalf or for members uh, on, uh, on, behalf, on their behalf in government securities. Um, yeah, maybe on that, Salma, if you can just quickly add. So um, for the existing members, like myself, who have not yet reached the <laughs> midterm access age, so NSF does invest our funds, um, and their biggest investment spaces are the government securities. On the longest uh, term, and you can understand why, because they can hold the money for longer. Uh, until you know certain people qualify but they do invest and invest in other space so when they do declare that I annual interest um, that we get paid on the on, on, on what we're saving it's as a result of what they've uh, earned out of the investment uh, thank you okay thank you if namisango who regulates unit trusts um, their unit trusts are regulated by the capital markets authority and uh, I think one, what I forgot to mention is that uh, the unit trusts are very structured because uh, as, as the regulator, Capital Markets Authority stipulates they are, there is need to be um, an investment manager or a fund manager who invests the money that has been pulled together by the various members. Then uh, there is a trustee who represents uh, the interests of the members on a day-to-day -day since uh, we recognize that uh, most of uh, most of the people out there or most of the members are busy. So you need to delegate that work to someone who is regulated and trusted. Uh, that's the trustee. Then there is also a custodian who holds the assets. So it is a very structured uh, form of investment all in the uh, all aimed at ensuring the safety of your investments or of your money that you have put in unit trusts. I'm also going to deal with um, Peter Walwambe's question. Do I need to be a Stanbic customer for SBG to be my broker? No, you do not need to be a Stanbic customer. We are open to um, any person with any um, bank account or bank client to be, um, to, to be our customers as SBG securities. Um, Yes, so in closing, I'm just going to get one more question um, and then I will be able to um, start or uh, we conclude, we get some concluding remarks and we close, the, we close off the discussion. Um, Madam Roslyn, Ruth Namawanda is asking, can she open a joint CSD account that's for two people? Uh, we talked about it, and uh, Ruth, you can open a CSD account uh, for two people. But first of all, you must have an account in a commercial bank reading the same names, because when your money has matured and we are sending it back, it should bounce back to Bank of Uganda. It should go on exact account, which is holding the two names. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Rosalind, Stephen, I want to give you maybe about 30 seconds for any last communications to our audience this morning. Rosalind, I'll start with you, ladies first. I would, I'd like to thank NSSF to give us this opportunity uh, to talk to you people. And uh, we, we are trying to pass on the message to most of us, our customers, but uh, we have a website where you can access Bank of Uganda website. There is information. There are communications uh, on the website. And uh, in case you are 
near Bank of Uganda, anywhere up country. We have Masaka Mbari, Mbarara, Fort Potro, all those. You can go there and ask, get information. Or you come to Bank of Uganda, uh, counter number 14. We have uh, everybody can come. The public can come and ask as many questions as you want. Uh, so that is all. We wish you well. And please invest, invest, invest so that in future you don't regret. And if you are young, start investing at as early as as hard as you start working and you will not, never regret. People who have done it have not regretted and there are very many examples. When you come to Bank of Uganda, I think we shall talk at length. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Roslyn. Stephen? Uh, thank you. I'll just add my voice to thank NSSF for the Financial Literacy Initiative. I think it's been a timely intervention uh, given that you know midterm access has just been paid out. Uh, we do hope this session has um, uh, helped members and will guide their investment decisions better. Uh, so do consider government securities for the benefits we've highlighted. Uh, you know, risk-free, um, the return is relatively good and they're very liquid. Whenever you need the money, you can get it out. Uh, thank you all for listening to us and uh, uh, wish you all the best. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Rosalind. Uh, as I conclude the session, I would like to um, thank our audience and uh, uh, thank uh, NSSA for organizing this. In closing, uh, I think uh, one of the key takeaways is the fact that as we access or as we get our incomes, as we uh, access our midterm savings, um, rather than putting all the money in the usual um, forms of investments that we have um, been used to, uh, government securities, unit trusts, uh, and other avenues that we can utilize to actually uh, recognize and um, get on our, get to the journey or create wealth. Um, so please reach out to SBG Securities. We are a trusted investment advisor. We will help you break down some of these complicated terms. Uh, there was a lot of questions about uh, if I invest five million, if I invest a hundred thousand, what sort of return would I look out for? Uh, please uh, contact us uh, at SBG Securities. We will be able to um, give you those calculations and help you decide, make the right decision, um, depending on uh, what sort of risk appetite or what you want to do and your aspirations uh, are. So um, please reach out to us. I did indicate um, the, our contacts and uh, our location of our offices in, uh, in the chat. So please reach out and we look forward to walking your investment journey with you. Thank you very much. Jacqueline, back to you. Thank you so much, Salima. Thank you so much, the panel, Stephen and Roslyn. We thank you so much for your time for taking off uh, these hours to teach our members on how to invest in government securities. So my take home today, which I need to share with people is that diversification is key. So if you can, please diversify your investment and then track, track your investments, like Rosalind mentioned, track your investment, wherever it is, whether it's in, you have a real estate, please kind of go out and uh, have a look at it uh, know that your land is safe, know that your business is doing well, know that the money you use to buy government securities is actually there, track, get statements. Then my other take home is that uh, we need li liquidity. So you need to invest in assets where when you need cash, it's easy. Because anytime you could maybe fall sick. And moreover, when you're old, at old age, that's when we need liquidity more. So invest in assets. When you say now I need say 200 million for treatment, you can easily convert that asset into cash. That's my take home today. So thank you so much uh, Renzori uh, for the water that has kept us uh, hydrated during the session. Uh, you've always sponsored uh, uh, drinking water for all our webinars. Thank you so much, the Financial Literacy Unit. Thank you, NSSF, for putting in money to educate the public about financial literacy, for wanting your members to be financially independent at retirement. 
Thank you so much, the financial literacy team. Thank you, Mr. Headmaster. Sir, uh, you're currently on leave, but we thank you for the effort that you always put and the council of ladies, as you always call us. So from us, we wish you a very good uh, afternoon. Bye for today. Thank you.